say a little bit about what brought him to these and a bit about the items themselves. They're remarkable and uh, early. And um, then you'll all have an opportunity to have a closer look. Um, a sweet besiege mark with questions. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take it from there. Over to you, Mark. Thank you so much, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm a physician by training and uh, practicing currently, and I've always had interest in how uh, medicine has been looked at throughout different ages. So we'll just jump into it uh, right away um, and introduce three books that are uh, Persian medical uh, encyclopedias, mostly. The first one, uh, the title is Hedayat uh, al-Muta'alim al which is the oldest extant uh, medical book in Persian. Uh, there are three copies of it in the world. This one is the oldest one, and it's probably the best preserved. The author has a very long name. We'll just call him Al-Khwaini, Al-Khwaini al-Bukhari. Uh, as his name says, he was from Bukhara. And um, he uh, states the reason for writing this book uh, is because his son asked him to write something light and easy so common people can understand medicine. Uh, the date of the manuscript is 1085, uh, and he states that he is the student of the student of the great Razi, Zakaria Razi. So extrapolating from that date puts his practice years in the latter half of the 10th century. Now it's an encyclopedia of medicine, and as you see, I've opened the page to um, the chapters. Basically, it's about 200 chapters. 51 of them are physiology and anatomy. Physiology is the humoral physiology, originating from the Hippocratic uh, corpus back in the fifth century BC. Anatomy is very descriptive, using all words. There's really no diagrams, very uh, sparse uh, graphics uh, are there to express some uh, complicated points, uh, and then follows a list of about 130 diseases. Now the unique thing about this book is it's not the first uh, medical encyclopedia, but it's very systematic. Uh, first is the name of the disease, then sign and the symptoms that the patient has presented with, and then the treatment, various treatments depending on which level of the disease the patient has. Um, when you get to it, for example, uh, the last line there is about melancholy, malachulia, uh, same uh, root of the word. And apparently he was famous for treating uh, melancholy and prior to that it's mania. Uh, he gives a description of this condition, which pretty much matches up with what we uh, describe it in the DSM diagnosis today. And uh, I had heard that he's famous for it and finally reading this book, his uh, prescribed treatment is uh, to provide very strong uh, purgatives. So the patient is so weak that uh, no uh, extremes of emotions are felt <laughs> <laughs> when you're dealing with such critical conditions. Um, the medicine in it, as I said, it, it originates in the Hippocratic Corpus back in the fifth century BC. That's a diverse set of uh, about 50 to 70 treatises, uh, but this was systematized by Galen in about 200 AD. And uh, it is this body of knowledge that was uh, en bloc translated in the great 8th and the 9th century and entered the Islamic world. Uh, arguably the greatest contribution of these uh, physicians is to systematize it, to make an encyclopedia out of it and make it practical because Galen was a very prolific writer. He wrote about 21 volumes. His word count is about uh, 4 million. Those are the ones that have survived. And probably he wrote up to upwards of 10 million. Uh, just to put that in context, King James Bible version is 800,000. So you couldn't take all these volumes to the patient's home and take the signs and symptoms and make your diagnosis. This kind of very mobile book makes that practical. Um, moving on to the next one, it's another medical encyclopedia. Uh, it's a famous one. It's called the Zakhiri Kharaz Shahi, which means uh, treasure of Kharaz Shah. 
The author is uh, Ahmed Gorgani. I'm sorry, Hussein Yusuf Gorgani. Um, I think that was his brother. And he, um, uh, this page that I have it open to um, is very interesting in the sense that, in the sense that it's the, the history of medicine in one page. Uh, when you take a look at it, the first red uh, words uh, are what Hippocrates has said. So that the topic of discussion is, uh, uh, I was asked to get into it a little bit more. The topic of discussion is ascites, most likely, but any kind of fluid accumulation in the abdominal cavity, most likely due to liver failure, which is the most common cause of it. And in my country, in the States, the most common cause of that is uh, the bottle. So uh, that's the topic of discussion. And uh, uh, author first cites Hippocrates, and Hippocrates says something about the etiology of that problem uh, due to the excess of the uh, phlegm. The next red uh, letters over there is what Galen says, and Galen puts a little twist into it, puts a little question mark into what Hippocrates has said, and then he, Gorgani moves on to the third letter, which is Avicenna, Abu Ali Sina in the 11th century. He basically uh, divides it as the philosopher, he has to divide everything into subcategories and subspecies, but more importantly, he goes into a very astute clinical observation of what that condition can lead to, uh, such as uh, difficulty breathing, lock of, loss of appetite, color change, jaundice, and so forth. Very astute, and then he uh, goes on to talk about his uh, treatments, which uh, I find it interesting because the problem is, according to them, excess fluid. So he thinks that we need to get rid of this fluid. So one of his uh, methods is to have a thirsty patient uh, stand in the sunlight, which makes sense in the, in the <laughs> logically, but uh, the harm may be more than, more than the benefit. Um, the other interesting thing about this uh, manuscript is the uh, marginal writing, as is now and as it was then, the uh, subsequent owners of these manuscripts would put their own notes and observations and experiences on the margin to be used. And this one is in Judeo-Persian. So it's the Persian language using the uh, Hebrew script. Um, the Persian language lost its own uh, script of Pahlavi uh, over the few hundred years of uh, uh, Muslim takeover. And now uh, with its resurgence, is the way I look at it is looking for a script to write it in. Obviously, the Arabic script is used, but on the margin here is the, is the Hebrew one. Maybe two scripts vying for a language to be to express. One last point about this manuscript. This is nothing, this is far from a beautiful medieval manuscript. This is a rough manuscript and I don't know if people can palpate it. The paper is like cardboard. It's made to withstand being carried around to people's homes and so forth. It's made to withstand all kinds of uh, spillage as is prone to when your main uh, mode of treatment is purgatives, emetics, uh, emulents, um, bloodletting, cupping, and so forth. Um, so handle with care. And lastly, this is um, titled Tashrih Badani and Son, which uh, now would mean the description of uh, human body. But um, the root of the word Tashrih is to cut up, just like anatomy, which means to cut up. Uh, so it's, it could be translated, and Akhwaini uses uh, tashri in the sense of dissection. So you could say this is a uh, dissections of the human body. It is anything but that. Uh, the, the one thing I want to point out in this uh, book are the um, full body diagrams, which you can take a look at. It's the first time in, in Islamic encyclopedias uh, that full body diagrams are uh, are expressed. Now the origin of these diagrams are very enigmatic uh, because uh, they're in the Latin uh, encyclopedias there are very similar diagrams present so there might have been uh, some cultural transmission Latin ones being earlier than the Islamic ones but um, it's unknown it's this frog leg position squatting position some suggestion has been made that it's it's the patient on the dissection table. The whole question of dissection during the Islamic era and even prior to that is a, is a complicated one. 
but that could be true. Some of these um, diagrams have the head totally um, extended back, which could happen in a in a um, in the phase of rigor mortis, which can happen a few hours after death. And I, you would imagine if there is a dissection that's happening, you would have to do it rather rapidly, especially if you're in, in the Middle East, because the heat of the day would not allow that body to stay uh, pleasant for long. <clears throat> and uh, so there are six diagrams of this position. Uh, this one that I have it open to is the only one that could be considered unique to the um, to this uh, book because the other five have been found in Latin uh, manuscripts that are earlier. Uh, this sixth one takes the diagram that showcases the body's arterial system and superimposes on it a, a uterus with a with a fetus in the breech position. Now, interestingly, uh, the author doesn't say anything about these diagrams. The text and this one is referring to the anatomy of the nerves, motor and sensory or so. So there's a whole question of how these diagrams uh, made it into these books. Were they put there later on or did the author place it right there? There's a very uh, small reference to the diagram in one of the, one of the pages. I think I'll stop there, lest I incite your wrath, and I'm open, uh, open to questions. Thank you so